Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nerd On Update, the weekly show where we talk about all the nerdy news we're excited about, and we also answer questions from you all, the people. I know you haven't seen this face in a long time. It's crazy. I'm <gasps> back. Know. Hello. Whose voice uh, is that? Who knows? Because we don't introduce the hosts on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, but I think Corey should start us off. Knights of the Old Republic is not <laughs> what I'm reporting on today. Wow, I'm uh, shocked. I'm reporting on Marvel's Armor Wars, which is set to start filming this fall, maybe October, as the rumor mill uh, has spit out. And the thing that I'm most excited about this, for those of you who don't know, Armor Wars is Don Cheadle's TV show for um, War Machine. So finally, we're getting a War Machine uh, uh, show. But here's the thing. Rumor has it that Sam Rockwell will be returning Ooh. as Justin Hammer. So you're all hot and bothered from, for this. I'm all hot and bothered Ooh. from Iron Man 2. Uh, look, Justin Hammer is a underappreciated villain. Well, I won't say that because actually there's a large fandom online that is a, a Justin Hammer uh, fan base. They were like, he was underutilized. He was great. Sam Rockwell, can't go wrong with that. The little details in his character, like there's a scene in Iron Man 2 where he's talking uh, to Mickey Rourke's character and you can see that he has the fake tan on the palms of his hands. Never addressed, mm -hmm. but just chef's kiss. So uh, if we can get Justin Hammer back against Rhodey in Armor Wars, I think that would make this show just an absolute blast to watch. Don Cheadle would be having fun. Sam Rockwell would be having fun. We as the audience, we'd love it. Um, I haven't kept up it. totally on the TV shows. I would love it. Let's be honest. <laughs> Anything with Sam Rockwell, I'm like, it's gold. Uh, so this is what I'm excited for. So yeah, filming in the fall. Don't have a release date yet. Obviously, if they're filming in the fall, it'll probably be 2023 sometime mid to late the next year. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a big news. This is but something that people like myself have been asking for for a while. It's like, bring Justin Hammer back somehow, please. We need more of him. Uh, yeah. So that's my news. Nice, Ooh nice. I think Caitlin should go next. Yeah, All right. why not? Uh, so one of the things that I have been working on while I have been gone was I got to announce my involvement in uh, the English dub for Tribe 9, which is uh, extreme baseball. It's from the same uh, creators of uh, Danganronpa and Akudama Drive. And uh, it's a really good show. <laughs> Uh, and we got to finally announce our villain for the series. We got a uh, corpse husband to be our our main villain, Ojiro Otori, uh, which was kind of a shock for all of us, but really cool. He's got a deep, beautiful voice. He makes a bunch of music uh, and is a is an awesome person. So that was a cool thing that happened. And then also an interesting thing that came up was uh, I saw that in the book of Boba Fett, a character comes back that people know very well. And it it came to light that their voice was not them reprising their role. It was actually them coming back through a program called Respeacher. Now they are in support of this. They got paid for it, like, you know, all of that good stuff. But it kind of makes us question the like, actors in support of it? Yes. Okay. Um, that's what I was told. Uh, no, I just what I meant. I didn't know he meant by who they're in support of it. But yes, 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 yes. Um, trying to like, spoilers. Spoiler just to yes. even yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying name. to. I'm like trying to. <laughs> yes, <laughs> doing our best not to say anything we shouldn't. Um, but uh, I just think the the less about the what that is and more of the it's interesting to see that come to be a thing. Like we've known that's going to be a thing for a really long time. There have been like yeah. vocaloids and AI programs yeah. that have been coming to light more and more. But it's um, a it's a program if what does the program do exactly? So you feed um other things like let's say the, like the actor did audio. audiobooks, um they've been in TV shows, um all movies, all sorts of things. So they fed all of that audio, clean audio into this program, and then it created that voice from all wow. of that and then could like make new things yes. out of it. So, okay. So it takes archival audio and, and it tr basically makes a bot. New performance. Yeah. 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 Um, so hmm. the kind of the hard part about that is it, I mean, hum putting human thoughts and feelings and emotions behind those things is very, very difficult. Um, so that's 
Yeah. But, you know, CG, how many years ago didn't look very realistic. So the audio side is probably going to develop pretty quickly as well. So I mean, that already it's has just, uh, at that point. It, it already has. that episode and it, I um, didn't, it felt off, but I just put it into, you know, probably like, oh, probably the stand in or the CG was making it off. But that makes sense. Yeah. But that's what yeah. it was. It was pretty, that's scary. Yeah, it it's was scary. it was a little things freaky. Are, it got Bonnie and I very, like doubting very close. reality. Like we were like, whoa. Very uncanny valley. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I I like chalked it up to like maybe he they recorded during the pandemic and it was just, you know, bad recording, but it's yeah, trippy. Yeah. Trippy. I uh, I'm just intrigued by that stuff. I I I don't know enough about it to speak like, like I'm an expert or anything, but that's just something that piqued my interest of uh, something that I would like to dive more into. Just yeah, very it, surface level, this exists, do your own homework. It brings up like a lot of um, actors do this. So when they CGI scan you into a movie, the actors will actually patent that likeness so that it Correct. can't be used again or own the licensing for it so they can be ensured that it can't be used again. And it sounds like that it's in a weird gray area with audio. Of course, audio always is in that weird gray area where like music, of course, got totally fucked by the internet uh, oh, yeah. way early Massively. on. And so now it's the music industry has never come back in the same way because uh, it's trickier. Uh, audio seems to be going that same way. And I wonder if artists will start to uh, copyright their their vocal performances as well. Yeah. Or ask for I, that in their contracts when they do a, pro, uh, uh, a, a job. Well, I mean, it, they're... It, I was just going to say, I mean, NFTs are very much in the guise right now. uh, And there are now NFT libraries that include music, which, I mean, I know that um, uh, Caitlin, you're more familiar with her and friends with her. And we've even had a video on our YouTube channel. But I know that Erica Harlicker, some of her music was stolen and put on this website. Uh, Even um, I know that there was a huge thing that happened with Troy Baker where he was in support oh, yeah. of voice NFTs and that was a whoopsie. Yeah. Whoopsie. Um, so, I mean, it just comes at a time that it's just, I think that the world in a way is becoming more aware of that kind of thing. So for me, when I, when I found out, I was like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. What? And has the NFT conversation really been had over here yet? No, 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 not really. So not beyond an eye roll from me. <laughs> Fair. So uh, for everybody who has never heard of NFT, it is a non-fungible token. It is essentially a hyperlink like a, or a link that says this piece of digital whatever it is, you have the ownership of that digital whatever it is. Um, but the problem is to like create that stuff, it takes massive amounts of energy. Um, because you have to be running, um, what is it? Processors. Uh, yeah, I believe yeah, so. Have, I'm, I'm, there's very... like warehouses of hardware running at a hundred percent. Like you can, you can find gear super cheap because people are running the, um, the hardware at a hundred percent, 24 seven warehouses filled with them. That's why uh, graphics these. cards and whatnot are really expensive. I mean, is this the yeah. same? Like, cause I know that this is like cryptocurrency how this is mined um but that's why like i was like oh i'm gonna get a gaming laptop that'll be cool my friends were like no you're not no you're not (laughs) no you're not i remember one of my old roommates um did bitcoin mining and the only reason he was able to do it because it was just starting to hit the boom of bitcoin early early on Mm -hmm. um he was able to do it because I was working for a tech and gadget site or tech gadget and gaming and companies would send review um, hardware. So he had rows and rows and rows of processors and cards and all sorts of stuff that he could run and would just mine whatever he could because he was getting it for free. Right. You know? So, yeah. We're through the great I'm going to uh, shout out Ethan here in the chat. He says, my opinion on NFTs can be summed up with that clip of Keanu laughing at NFTs. There was an interview where uh, Carrie Ann Moss and uh, Keanu Reeves from the Matrix series were being interviewed uh, for for this um, Unreal Engine thing that they did, uh, which, like, first of all, give me that Matrix game because that was amazing. I don't know if you guys played it at all, but 
it was super fun and it made me go, why isn't this a whole, is this a whole, it should be a whole game. <laughs> uh, but he asked him about NFTs and Keanu laughed and he goes, oh, you mean those things that anyone can copy and, and claim that they own? And, uh, and then he goes, <laughs> and I was yeah. like, that's how the whole world feels, Keanu. He's the best of us. Anyway. Oh, it's, yes. it's terrible. Uh, yeah. Anyway, obviously do your own homework about things. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of information out there. Um, but what a yeah. beautifully cruel mistress technology is. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Josh? Oh, yeah. My news. Um, speaking of. Um, so last week I talked about the, the cray-crayness that is happening with Spotify um, and Seth Rogen. Not Seth Rogen. Sorry. Uh, Joe Rogen. Um, and oh, yeah. it just keeps getting better. No, gift it that keeps on giving. The gift that just keeps on giving. Uh, basically, over the past week, what has uh, happened is that it has come to light. I don't listen or watch Joe Rogan, so I have no reference point except for. I what watched comes Fear up. Factor. Yeah, um, but his his day. podcast specifically. <laughs> somebody posted a video that was basically a compilation of every time he said racially um, insensitive things, specifically slurs, the N word. Um, yeah. and then, uh, from that, I'm some news I come to and I'm like, this is exciting. Some news just makes you laugh. Cause you're like this, you said that this the, is the real world. This is the real wor world. The Spotify CEO was like, you know, this is bad. This is bad. But I just don't think it's right to cancel Joe Rogan because that would be censoring vo so voices and blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, Neil Young uh, continues his his fight, and now he released a um, a statement that was basically saying things like musicians take your music off Spotify, um, people that work at Spotify leave that soul sucking company for your own good, um, oh. and I mean more comp I mean more uh, musicians are starting to leave like India Ire who I love. Uh, is taking her music off. Uh, as a musician myself who has Spotify, I'm really in the, we had a very small conversation in Nerd On about Spotify and podcasting. And it, it's hard because it is such a source for as a, as a it's business. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, for a, sure. I mean, the truth is I've always, uh, look, I've said Spotify is the new Napster for like years. I was like, yeah. they, pay, <laughs> they pay pennies to artists. Um, not that any of the other streaming services are that much better. I mean, you have Tidal, by, which was Jay-Z and Beyonce's, which do pay artists quite a bit, but that price tag for consumers is a bit tricky. Apple seems to be kind of in the middle. They still, they still, all the entire music industry is underpaid, but they they seem to value artists' uh, work a bit more, which is why I stick with Apple Music for my subscription service. Yeah, I'm probably going to um, switch back. But like, it's it's tricky for, for us because we, it, it, it's, we're such a small potato and uh, we're trying to grow and at this point it's it's a it's a moral verse like can we keep going without one of the largest uh streaming yeah. services that is available to us if this was when it um, for, when we first started we'd be like oh yeah let's get off spotify because our focus as a podcaster anytime was apple but spotify has slowly taken more control of the market value of mm -hmm. podcasting in general and they keep growing so it's it's always very it's always a very strange world, um, but yeah, I mean they pay musicians like I was actually looking at my report for taxes and it's just like, not saying that I'm any like oh hundreds of thousands is not, but it's like, it's interesting to see lines of like ten streams zero. You're like, cool, mm. dope, 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 dope. Um, next part of my news, yeah. uh, I mean I it, my my point is with this whole thing, it'll be interesting to see how it all how the dust settles because I just shakes out, especially in this current world. And as the, uh, zeitgeist, zeitgeist and all social media and peeps just like kind of waking up in a sense, seeing the things that are coming out, it actually weirdly, strangely gives me some sort of hope. Like yeah. it, it's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, these kinds of, this kind of stuff shouldn't be happening. Like musicians should be paid. Or their music that's getting yeah, out yeah they there. shouldn't be paid three dollars for a thousand streams yeah yeah a song yeah um three dollars for one thousand plays of your yeah soul <laughs> yeah 
So uh, next part of my uh, news is the Razzies. I don't know if anybody's familiar the with the Razzies. Razzies. The Razzies. Oh, yeah. Halle Berry went and accepted hers. Like, Hell yeah. Good honor. I think it's I think it's an interesting kind of thing to have. It is it's funny to think about. Basically, if anybody does not know what the Razzies are, they're basically like the um anti Oscars in a sense. She did it the year she won an Oscar, too. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like I think it's hilarious. Um, but basically it's like worse this, worse this. Yeah. Um like Worst actor, one of them is LeBron James in Space Jam, A New Legacy, or Mark Wahlberg. Like, sometimes you read the list and you're like, wow, I did not expect that. Um, I just want, oh, no. Worst perf- <laughs> But this year, there was a new category that just made me laugh, laugh out loud. It is Worst Performance by Bruce Willis in a 2021 movie. Because the other oh. day, I was looking through all the new movies and I was like, oh, shit, it's Bruce Willis. It's Bruce. Will- it's Bruce. There's another Bruce Willis movie, and if you compare He's like everywhere. the 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 images, the like the artwork, you're like, they almost look the same. And then watch the trailer of a couple of them, and you're like, wait, is this not a different movie? <laughs> wait, what is what is happening? It's probably all these movies he's filmed two years ago, just finally, yeah, coming out. Yeah, it so is. Um, I just think it's uh, the the Razzies make me laugh. They just crack yeah. me up. Because, I mean, sometimes you're like, okay, you guys are just being, you guys are being silly. I also wanted silly. to say, this is a really quick news, that Mel Gibson reconfirmed that he is directing Lethal Weapon 5 and Danny Glover is involved. I'm just excited because I found that out. So. Fuck Mel Gibson. <laughs> I know, fuck huh. that, but I like Lethal Weapon, so. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for Let's that, Corey. Let's do a remake. Look, he said some super hurtful anti-Semitic shit. Yeah. But we should do a remake, Josh, with you uh, and uh, and Dustin from Apple. And that's the new Lethal Weapon. Oh, shit. I mean, I And then we don't even it. have to deal with Mel Gibson. Tom could direct Problem it? Problem solved. Tom would direct it. Yeah. Yeah, then we'll take that news back. Yeah. That's my new go. news. That's ha- <laughs> Yeah, we got this. I'm getting too young for this. Um, next part- <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Bonnie could write it. No, Ooh. Anyway. Uh, next part of the show is in which we answer questions from you, the people. And if you would like to submit questions, well, there are so many ways that I had to create a website for it. And you go to nerdon.tv backslash questions. And there are all the ways. My favorite way is to join the Discord, nerdon.tv backslash Discord. And there are channels in there that you can submit your questions. And I'm just going to put even more icing on the cake. If you join the Nerdon Nation, for as little as the price of looking at co- coffee. No, it's less than the price of looking at coffee for four yeah, quarters a we month. We were doing the math, Caitlin, and it turned out a dollar is no longer the price of coffee, like Tom was saying. It, it was like, it's enough to look at coffee. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, you can look that at it. That looks good. Sadly. That coffee looks good. Uh, you can join <sighs> the Nerd on Nation and you can participate in sending questions. So you get the Nerd on Nudge. You get to participate in the Guess That Grump. Guess That Grump. Guess That Grump <gasps> poll. Uh, but yes, you can ask questions like, let me pull up our handy dandy Google Sheet. Have it right here because get I'm that fancy. Nerd on Nudge, homie. Get that Nerd on Nudge. Nerd on TV. While you're doing that, Kaylin doesn't know this, but we're keeping track of who's gotten it right on the show out of our patrons, and someone gets crowned at the end of the year who who got the most. No way! Right. What? And yeah. We're, we're Are also, we sending like a Burger King crown? We're thinking I, of I'm, making we're something. something. We're yeah. gonna get like a trophy okay. or something. Like I'm not gonna okay. get this right, but Tom called it something something Grand Poobah. Yeah. Uh, I forget I, what the I'm first. I'm pretty one sure was. it changes slightly every week, God so it's King, gonna be really hard. Grand Poobah. Yeah, Guess I don't know. It's that sounds like a Tom title. Yeah, yeah it is. So, um, first question mm-hmm. comes from B Rad. What are some things that, if you experience them in your daily life, would make you question your reality? Wake up, Corey. You have to wake up. Fuck you, man. <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> no, don't do that. I hate <gasps> that. That's I talked about that on one of my streams where I was like, that's scary to me. Um, like if I came oh, to you man. during a recording and went, Corey, you have to wake up. It's time yeah. to wake up. 
fuck off. Like, no, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> That's, yeah, I hate just that. Just casually that one drop it in like the middle of a sentence. Fr- like, I know I do other things. I pinch myself, all that stuff. So, but that one, like, yeah, I don't like that one. I don't like that one at all. <laughs> so that's the one. Yeah, I don't like that one. <laughs> um, one automatically comes to to mind, and, and it is sleep related. Is it's when you have those dreams that take place in your current reality, like you're sleeping in your bedroom, everything matches. Like sometimes you have a dream where you're sleeping in your bed, and then you open the door and you're somewhere else. But those dreams that take place in your bed. Everything looks the same. Your walls, the paint, the sheets, everything is the same. But it's a dream and something fucked up is happening. And then you wake up and you're like, wait, what the fuck? Was that? What was that? Was that a dream? Was that reality? Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I hate those dreams. They, they disturb me. Huh. Caitlin? We just disturbed her beyond. <laughs> I, I, well, no, I don't know. Like, I don't know what would break my reality so bad that I was like, oh, this is not, I feel like so many crazy things have happened. The um, closest thing I could think of is those dreams where you wake up and like get ready for work and then you wake up and you're not ready for work yet. And you're like, what the fuck? Just, I did, I have to do all that again. <laughs> I I have had those dreams where, I got up and did my whole day. And as I was leaving the, I think it was like I was in high school. So I was leaving the school and I woke up and they were like, oh, you got to get up. And I was like, F- I did it Just once. Just did this. <laughs> Just did uh, doing it again. I don't Deja know why. Deja Vu is another one that would just like. Deja Vu is one, but. I, I've I thought you were going to fuck a with lot, me, Kayla. Actually, that whole story. I thought you were going to be like, and then I, when I was leaving, um, they said to me like, Corey, you have to wake up. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wake up, Corey. God damn, I hate it so much. <laughs> uh, no, I think if I... uh yeah, look. What do you mean? Oh, I can't look at like the expression yeah. change. <laughs> yeah, that was not cool. I'm sorry. It's all good. We're Hello. here. We out here. Uh, I think if I was suddenly like that like floaty water feeling, that would wreck mm. me. If there were like fish suddenly yeah. in common air, that would mess me up a lot. That's it. I like that question. I don't, but I do. <laughs> I like it. Well, it makes me if think. You woke up, maybe it'd be then more I feel fun. horrible. Fuck you. <laughs> I shouldn't have even said anything. I should have just played that straight, but it just gets me. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question it. comes from Dr. Wonka. Uh, Desert Island. You get to take one form of entertainment with you on your island, and only that one. Which one would you choose? Music, film, yeah. books, or TV shows? It's nice to know Tom's not here trying to break this shit, break these questions like he always does. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness I'm here. So yeah. if I missed a category, it's a different it vibe here. for me. That's a fun vibe. He's just like, I'm going to win. And you're like, Ugh. oh, yeah. This is not a winning thing. Hmm. So it's like a fun thing that you're bringing with you. It's just a. It just says, "What form of entertainment would you bring to an island?" And that's, but that's all you're gonna have to your on your desert island. PC. Yeah. Your PC. Yeah. Where do you? Play but it with in? internet. Mm. Yeah. That's breaking the island. question. That's totally the no, longest not. Ethernet cable in the world. Correct. <laughs> and I'm imagining the other end of it, and somebody goes, "What does this Ethernet cable go to?" And they slowly. Work and I way. wrote all the way on it, unplug this and die. There it is. <laughs> like, wow. there it is. yeah. Wow. Ethan got the Brendan Mulligan question. Audio signals are recording of Navy signals. Uh, entertainment for me on a desert island. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume there's no power on a desert island. It's a guitar. Uh, I got like, I got like 10 sets of strings, so... No, that'll last me a while. I, I have, have a banjo sets. string over here. One banjo he, string? He can make that yeah. work. No, like one. Hang on. Uh, oh, just, oh my God. There's five. There you go. I don't have a banjo though, so. That's interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I'm back. Or do, you, or do you do the smart answer? Like my entertainment is a fishing rod and lures. That's not and then you fun. Can have food. That's no. What kind That's of not. island is it? 
Is it a coconut tree island? Is it a banana tree island? A is desert it a vegetable island? island? Is it desert a Stardew Valley island? island? I believe it's a desert island. What, what does the question say? A desert, desert island. island. What if there's still coconuts there? See, that question just seems like, well, I'm going to bring my guitar, but I'm only going to get to play it for the length my body can handle not eating. So yeah. huh. at least I have that. Yeah. Well, but then you could use the strings to fish. Yeah. So why would you do that? They're for your guitar. Once they break, because they will break. Yeah. But they won't be long enough for a fish anymore. String them all together. Because they're strings. Yeah. yeah. Well, because also, like, when you break a string, it's like, yeah, you could replace one, but. <laughs> Gotta replace them. If one breaks, you should replace them all because the other ones are on the way. Yeah. It's gonna sound, <sighs> it's just the sound of a, anyway. Uh, next Mom question. said, Caitlin, stop naming islands that are not a desert island. <laughs> no. <laughs> could it be a banana island? A, like, you know, those banana deserts that everyone hears about? Tornado <laughs> island. Did could you say it tornado? Tomato. Oh, <laughs> you know those tornado islands? Yes, yeah. tornado you know island. The, the I can worst eat as much island as I I've want ever been island. to. Yeah. The I can go home at nighttime island. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next Keep question comes from Wookie Samurai eighty two. Shout out! If you could chat with a single character from Star Wars for an hour, who would it be? Oh man, my head just hurt. Jar Jar Binks, just so everyone would be upset that I chose him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a choice. That's one of those moments that made me question reality. No. Yeah. Um, all right, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would regret man. it, but it'd be funny forever. I know You'd mine, regret but, it, but it, it'd be worth it. Stick yeah. for the bit. Yeah. Stick around for the bit. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. I know I mine, but that. I don't want to take what I think is probably Corey's. Go for it, man. It's okay. I would totally hang out with Obi Wan. It's a good answer. I mean, it's a really just good like, answer. like totally hang out with Obi Wan. My yes, that is close to my first answer. Oh, I think I know the next one, but do you? I don't know what it is, son. Is it Qui Gon. Yeah, hell yeah. Yay! Hell yeah, it's Qui-Gon Jinn. I love how you thought that he might not know the answer. No, I was going back and forth. There was either going to say two things. He was going to say Qui-Gon Jinn or he was going to say Chewbacca. Um, yeah. So yeah, it'd be Qui-Gon Jinn all the way. He, first of all, for me, is one of the coolest Jedi that ever existed. He, he uh, was straight up the rebellious teenager of the Jedi Council. And he was like, that's stupid. I like a lot of the things you did, but the decision you're making right now is dumb as fuck. So I'm going to do it anyway, homie, because I think it's the right thing to do. And it was because he brought balance to the force in the end of everything. But he's also the first Jedi to ever figure out force ghosting. So like he figured out how to use the force, understood it at such a level that in death, he was able to come back and uh, speak with other Jedi and teach them how to do it. So dude's a legend. Qui-Gon Jinn all the way. Can I add addendum one thing? Yeah. I I really think I'd want to talk to Darth Maul. Yeah. One, because I want to stare at him for an hour straight. Sure. But also yeah. because I want to know what it's like to get cut in half. Respect. And live. Yeah. You know? In, and then have the, like a spider eat, body. And eat rats for years in the, yeah. in the garbage. And yeah. And have the little How the did legs. you not get infected? <laughs> yeah. How did you crazy. Li live through that? That's he lived. Do you want to know the answer? Hatred. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you store up that much in half of the body oh, you easy. had before? He's a Sith, man. It's how I it power my hat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is what it is. It's still hot. Yeah, pure spite. Um, Sexy. I mean, that is those questions. I mean, I can pull from the Discord, but also, Corey, did you write down from today? I did. Yeah. Let's uh, let's answer those because we don't. Always uh, answer the today questions just for kicks and giggles. Um, and Tom's not here. We also, can do whatever we want. I have to shout yeah. out Mamba for saying Snice Noodles, who I believe is the lounge singer in Jabba's Palace oh. with like the trumpet mouth. Do you know oh, who yeah. I'm talking about? I yeah. I, it's either that or it's the furry guy who they added. But I, I'm assuming Mamba. Pro yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to. <laughs> yeah. 
I, no, I know some Star Wars. I know some Star Wars. I don't know it all, but I know some of it. Um, so put your questions in the chat. So uh, here we go. Uh, we got one today uh, from uh, Ethan, who says, question, would you rather go back to when you were six years old, armed with all the knowledge you currently have, or get $100 million? $100 million. Josh? Oh, yeah, it's totally the money. I had a traumatic childhood. We're going back to, we're going to a million. Yep. <laughs> hundred million. Yep, yep, yep. Y'all know my answer. <laughs> Taking that money. hundred million dollars. Taking that money, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Corey doesn't want to go back ever. No, I, I, I'm, I, I, that's, that's my irrational fear. We talked about having irrational fears. So I was like, I don't think I have an irrational fear. That is my irrational fear. I'm like, oh my God. That's it. Uh, I think that's it. It's like the idea of going back in time to change something and losing everything I have, all my friends, my wife, my child, my cats, like terrifies me. I'm like, I don't Corey, even want to. Corey, what if you were actually like seven years or six years old right now? And dreaming, Corey, wake up. Uh, <laughs> then my truest, then it wasn't an irrational fear. Then it was a pretty rational one. <laughs> and then I still stand by that I have no irrational fears in that case. And then you wake up going, you know? wow, actually that was pretty rational. Huh. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, imagine investing in Bitcoin, though. Yeah, but that now I would just have $100 million now, which is pretty Yeah. Good. You can do a lot uh, in terms imagine of Imagine just getting $100 million or straight out cash. Yeah, that'd be wild, right? Uh, we have another question here. Um, I want to answer because maybe, maybe y'all know what this is because I don't. Tommy Stark asks, any chance you guys review or watch the Wayland yutani cinematic universe? I don't I know. I think that. is that alien? Is that what that is? I'm gonna look it up real quick. I, I will also look it up. Oh yeah, if you could look it up, that'd be great. Because I'm using my phone. Utani. Um, I think it's alien, and it's like. I mean, we've covered one so far. Covered the first alien. Yeah, because it was like 30 year That's... or 40 year. Is that correct? Alien. Wayland, I think, is alien. Alien movies. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the alien universe, would we ever watch and review them? Hell yeah. Oh, I mean, of course. I think that'd be a blast. And that includes Prometheus and the uh, alien. Revenant. Isn't it like Revenant? Revenant? Yeah, I yeah, think that's what it was like called. That. I will. Ooh, and I Predator. Know. But it, does that include Predator versus Alien? That's what they're they're saying. Like ah. AVP. Well, okay. Uh, Toasty is coming up saying Alien, Predator, Firefly. Oh, right. Because one of the tech on the Firefly ship says Waylon. Well, because we've, we've we did do Firefly way back we in did. the day, so we've done two already. <sighs> yeah, um, yeah says so we well, don't know. The thing yeah, is, they're know. mostly the only the first Alien is is technically ho like a horror thriller. The rest are action. Yeah, action. Is films. there a single jump scare in them? Probably. It is horror. I won't lie to you. I it won't lie is to you. horror. It is horror. full level ten horror if it even has one. Yes, one jump scare horror. Okay, well, maybe maybe that's one Horror. we'll cover on the side. I don't know because Alien is a huge franchise that I I do I have a love hate with Alien, and I would love to talk about that. I know Tom's got some feelings too, so I'll say, I'll put this I'll I'll say this. Soft yes. We have a lot of topics, so it's like yeah, yeah, especially on the uh, especially on the listener requests, we do keep all of them. Yeah. And we go, oh, okay, let's let's do this one. I feel like we should do Hatoful Boyfriend. Toasty says, by Caitlin's measure, the follow notification is horror. I mean, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> a yeah. lot of things fall under the category of horror. It doesn't take much. Horror. Doors. Horror. Yeah. I can't say yeah. that word very easily. Horror. 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 That's horror. why like a lot of people in the mood say horror with an A. Horror. Horror. Yeah. horror. Uh, horror. Another Sorry. question here from uh, Black Diablo Mamba. This question, Corey will be a dad soon. What live lesson would you like to impart on the new generation? And Corey, will the new baby <laughs> will the new baby be in PA's season two as Rachel McAdams secret baby? <gasps> um I can I can say this about PA's the baby is in season two. Ooh. It has been written in as of last week. She's she's in there. Okay. Um so uh life lesson. Life lesson we'd like to impart on the new generation. Um, do you have one, Josh? Yeah. I mean, I think number one, I would just say, believe in yourself. 
I mean, I just think of that it's it's not imparted. Uh, I think that the automatic social lesson is that you're not allowed to believe in yourself because if you do, you're egotistical and narcissistic, and that's not fucking true. No, no, you can ha- you can in a healthy way believe in yourself. Doesn't mean that you think you're better than anybody else because if somebody does, they're really not that confident. Really, believe in yourself. Trust yourself. That's yeah. Because like then you that. can you can do. You can do a lot with that. So, uh, Caitlin, do you have one? I have so many. Uh, do you? Yeah. Um, I feel like the one that I wish that I knew growing up is that you don't get to keep all the relationships you make. Mm. That was really painful for me as a kid because I thought that. I moved. We're gonna be friends forever. Like, yeah. Well, we moved when I was four, but I had this little friend group, and so every summer we would make a point to like still get together. Like our parents went out of their way to get us together at least once a summer, and then they started getting disinterested and hanging out, and then their parents didn't want to drive all that way, and yeah, it's a whole thing. We just. Yeah, it's a whole thing. And, you know, you go from four to eight to ten and suddenly that person is just like a like kind of a faded memory oh, in the I background. That so yeah. So I think that and especially even now, like the the friends that I thought were gonna be there forever and ever and ever, you know, you get to know people and sometimes that's not who they are, what they are. Yeah. They're not going to be that solid person you thought they were going to be. They're they're not around for as long as you thought they were going to be. And that was really hard because uh you know you wanna you want to be there for people. You don't want to let go of things. So I yeah. think um that was that was a hard lesson is that sometimes friendships come in seasons because sometimes they come back too. Like it's yeah. not like they're gone dead forever, mm-hmm. but sometimes they change and shift and you go you get closer to each other or drift further away. And sometimes your friendship needs that. Like, so I think that's the kind of life lesson I would pass. I dig it. Um, hmm. There's a lot. I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, Why? For, for, I don't know. Corey, don't wake up. <laughs> don't let others push you around. No, um, <laughs> I think, and this is, it's, it's hard to phrase this one, but I, I think there is an importance of, of putting yourself um, in your life, putting yourself, your safety, your mental health, your health first, but leading with empathy. Um, I think it's a, it's a, you can fall too far either way. I think you can obviously fall one way and, and be totally self-absorbed and, and miss what others around you need um, or you can fall the other way, which is you lead with empathy and you put yourself last. Um, And so something I'm hoping um, to instill in my daughter is, is that is, is having the kind of what Josh said is the believing in yourself, but also being okay with setting your boundaries. And, you know, if someone gets upset that you have these boundaries, like that's tough. That sounds like a them problem. But also mm-hmm. leading with empathy in the sense of like, you know, make sure that once you have your solid footing, you can turn around and lift those other people up with you. Um, and I think that's an important lesson that can, I think the next generation already really has. A lot of Gen Z or people who are politi- politically active have that. Um, and I would love to see that come back even stronger. stronger with. Uh, I've learned that my daughter is going to be part of the uh, Generation Alpha. Oh, so, shit. Um, oh boy. Um, yeah. Uh, what a name. And I think it. I think you know we are our, our generation. Uh, the millennials w- w- kind of wanted that, um, but you know, with with the rise of social media, when it happened, it's hard to have that empathy online. And and you yeah. know, there's all these arguments and people. You know, it's it's divis- divisive, 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 divisive. Thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, if, if the next generation can learn to set those boundaries and lead with empathy, I think it would be very beneficial to everybody. Yeah. 
I mean, I think also like mental health is coming into the conversation a lot more often these days in just in social conversations, but even in like pop culture, like that kind of thing. Like it's, it's starting to become a thing that people are talking about like often and being more aware of it. And I think like, I think everything that you all, that, that we said today is, is a part of mental health and people are becoming more, uh, I think empathetic and that kind of thing. So, uh, one more question, I think. One more question you think. Let me pull up Tom's pretty beautiful sheet. Um, let's pick one here. This is kind of in line with the Star Wars one, but mm-hmm. I want to I want to do it anyway. Um, I hope this isn't an old one that I missed at one point, but Heezy Media says you get to sit down for drinks with one video game character. Who are you drinking with and what? I'll oh, say God. I'll say uh, lunch or or drinks. What are you eating or what are you drinking? One video game character. What's the meal? Hmm. Oh, man. Hmm. That's really, that's, I feel like that's a, a very big question. Yeah. There's just mine. so we'll go go go. <laughs> Revan from Knights of the Old Republic. Oh my god! <laughs> it's the of most interesting character in the Star Wars universe that's not in the movies. Um. So, uh, it's very interesting because Revan was a Jedi, a fallen Jedi, right, and then returned, but also, uh, I guess in the canon. Revan became good. Um, so I think it'd be an interesting conversation to know a, one of the strongest Jedi of all time who became one of the strongest Sith of all time who returned again to become one of the greatest Jedi uh, in, in history. And I think what we would drink is blue milk. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. right? Couldn't like, you choose... Though? Star Wars. I feel like it would make Revan feel more comfortable. I don't know. Okay. Blue milk with Revan. Also, I'd be like, I finally had it. Because I had the one at Disney and it's it's lychee. That's not the same. Hmm. It's like it's like a it's like a iced smoothie. It's not blue milk. Hmm. Not the green milk from the new movies, mind you. Mm. Mm-hmm. From the weird nipple bird, but the blue milk from a new hope that they're drinking at the moisture farm on Tatooine. There you go. Great. Thank you for that clarification. I thought that had to be made. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're right. It it does, for sure. Uh I think for me, the the thing that popped up out of nowhere was I want to talk to um Vivi from Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that'd be that'd be nice. And I wouldn't want to uh drink. I would want to have like a picnic on a hillside and like just chat. Oh, you should like you should get like one of your your uh tea uh oh, setups yeah. going on. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be wonderful. A little afternoon tea with Vivi. Yeah. Mm. I would love that. Man. Jejoie? First one that comes to your head. I think maybe Barrett from Final Fantasy Seven. Good answer. Of course, he just seems so Fantasy sassy. VII. He just like he's just like a big old teddy bear, but sassy. And I love teddy bears that are sassy. <laughs> I wonder why, Josh. Yeah, yeah. So too bad yeah. there's not a Paddington video game, huh? Huh. Yet you're right. You're so yeah, right. <laughs> there might be a, a a video game, like a movie video game somewhere out there for yeah, Paddington. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure there uh, is. A Paddington open world RPG. We're just Tom, mischief. Uh, to Tom, Josh, there is a Paddington Adventures in London Nintendo 3DS video game. So well, you could say Paddington as your answer. 
And I and wouldn't be making shit up. And do you know what you would have for lunch? Oh, it would be marmalade sandwiches. There it is. And probably there it tea, because I don't drink. So it's like probably yeah. tea and marmalade sandwiches. That sounds so delightful. Right? Miss Paddington. <laughs> In like, like at, at the park. Like, yeah. just like on a, on a beautiful spring day, we would be enjoying fucking life. In England, let's let's England. say you get to travel abroad. The pan, the the, the pandemic's true. over. You're you're traveling to England to have this marmalade sandwiches and tea yeah. with, with him. Yeah, that's my answer. That is the only answer. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't want to force your hand, but it exists. No, no, I just, wanted I you just to know. didn't know that that existed. So here we are. Here we are. My there life have is it, guys. more precious. Uh, that is that is that that is this Kaylin, week's update. I loved having you back. It's so yeah. nice. I'm so excited. It was nice being back. Uh, shucks. Oh, shucks. shucks. Uh, everybody at home, thank you so much for watching on Twitch. If you are on YouTube, these do all these episodes go to YouTube. So check it out there. Um, all of the housekeeping that I could possibly throw out here, you can go to nerdon.tv and get all of it. All of the linky links. Wherever you're listening, uh, whether it's Apple, whether it is Spotify that we we mentioned. Uh, we are everywhere podcasts can be heard. So check it out. Uh, and while you're there, while you are there, stop by, rate, review. And then oh. there's this little square. It's a it's a squaro. That's what we have decided to start calling it. A squaro? There's a square and it has a little arrow. Oh, yeah. I came up with it the other day. Oh, okay. And nice. that's how you're going to share it. And you're going to share it to all of your social media. And actually, um, we got a review recently. And oh, did while we? He, while, while he looks that up, Caitlin, how would you describe getting a review? A review? Oh, man. I mean, have you ever gotten a blanket like out of the dryer? <gasps> mm-hmm. And like it like one. dinged the moment that the cookies you had baking in the oven also ding oh shit whoa that's what getting a review is like like you got a warm blanket like cape and warm cookies like straight into your face and like someone else brought them all to you you yes you You didn't have to leave the couch yeah that's what it's like i respect that so Um, thank you really i guess review that's what it feels like so thank you it does actually feel that when i get these i share them with everybody this one comes from dk31 on apple podcasts Nerd news and fun stuff is the title, and they say a good combination of nerdy news and comedy. First part is whatever news appeals to them. Second part is Q&A, where they humorously answer questions they received. Who are the hosts? I don't know. They're never introduced. That's right. (laughs) They know this show. They know this show, and this is for the update. Yeah, they do. Um, There's lots of where our reviews just keep going up, and I love it. It is how some people make a decision of whether or not they're going to listen to that's podcast. very true, actually. So. Yeah. I do the same thing on Steam. Like, I will look and see if it's positive, overwhelmingly positive, yeah. negative, yeah. mixed. You know, oh, that yeah. stuff, it, it counts. It does count. Uh, but that that's the housekeeping. That is the update. Thank you so much. We heart you. Take care of yourselves. You know the drill. As always, nerd, nerd on. on. Ending broadcast.